Hello, and thank you for joining today's panel. My name is Tiffany Johnson, and I am so grateful to be your moderator. I'm also the creator of Amazon's $150 million Black Business Accelerator, a and a program manager spearheading the development of new initiatives for underrepresented founders on AWS Activate Investments team. Today, we have an engaging panel discussion featuring successful Amazon sellers, sharing their top tips for building your community and growing your business. Brought to you by none other than Amazon's Black Business Accelerator. Today, I have here with me Karen Blackwell of Conda Chocolates, Amin Bahari of Elite Sweets, Kevin Gatlin of Playtime Adventure, and Rodney Marshall of Aldevra. Let's go ahead and kick it off. So panelists, tell me, tell me a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey. What led you to launch your business and build your brand? Let's go ahead and kick it off with you, Karen. Thank you, thank you so much, Tiffany. So I was in corporate America. I loved my job. The black MBA said, do you wanna take a trip to Ghana? So we took the trip and during that time I tasted the chocolate and I fell in love with it, asked a lot of questions. I learned a lot, like where does chocolate come from truly? Um, and so, but it wasn't that moment that I said I wanted to start a business. It was actually going to visit the Slave Coast Castle. And when you take that journey to look at where slaves were last at in Ghana before they take the trip to the United States, it's literally where I said, where can I do more to partner with Ghana? How can I go beyond just doing something from a charity perspective? So I was in a corporate America position, but I was thinking to myself, how can I do more? And so I actually made the decision to come back, do my research, started talking to people, talking to buyers, going to stores and they said, we can't keep chocolate on the shelves if it's good. And I said, mm, but this chocolate is good. So I launched Canda Chocolates and that's kind of how we are here today. Amazing, thank you so much. You. That lines perfectly with BBA's vision of economic empowerment. So yes. thank you for the work that you're doing. I mean, let's kick it off to you. Yeah, definitely. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Amin Bahari. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Elite Sweets. And at Elite Sweets, we're creating healthier alternatives to traditional sweets starting with our original product, the Elite Donut, which is a low sugar protein packed donut that's gluten free and keto friendly. Um, really for us, the inspiration goes back to my days in high school. Uh, age 16, I weighed 340 pounds and I was on the path to obesity and diabetes, which is something that runs in my family. And um, after seeing the negative effects of these diseases firsthand, you know, I knew that wasn't the life I wanted to live. So my twin brother Amir and I, we adopted a high protein keto lifestyle and in just over a year, uh, I lost 140 pounds. My brother wow. lost about 100 pounds. And um, you know, we were really inspired by our weight loss journey and the impact food has in our body. And we wanted to help others do the same. And um, you know, I think the problem we realized was, was this wasn't just our story, but mm -hmm. this is a story of tens and tens of millions of Americans like yes. us. And so you know, we wanted to do our part to create healthier alternatives to our favorite sweets. And so that's kind of why we got started. Yes, health is definitely wealth. That's right. Rodney, we're stuck. we'll go ahead with you. Um, I'm Rodney Marshall, president and CEO of Aldevra. Um, we're, we got started simply because I just couldn't keep a regular job being a disabled veteran and, you know, having the issues that the veterans who served in the conflicts and things that I've served in have. Um, just working a regular job just wasn't going to work for us and work for me. So I decided to try to start my own business and had happened to have a friend who wanted to get into the space that I was able to get us into. And from there, we just took off and Amazon has done great to help us continue to do so. Yes, thank you so much for your service and any veterans that are watching this. Uh, Kevin, tell us your story. Thank you, Tiffany. My name is Kevin Gatlin and uh, good morning, good afternoon to everybody. So my company is called Playtime Adventures and I created Playtime Adventures um, based on an experience. I had a friend whose son was sick in the hospital and I went to visit him. And uh, while there, we were, you know, doing everything to try to keep his son's spirits up. And it was really hard. So on the way home, I was thinking how that could be my wife and I. And what would we do to keep our son's spirits up? And I was reminded of my wife. She would utilize my son's bed um, to play board games, um, to, to draw on, to do homework on. And I thought in the hospital, the bed is the most important piece of furniture there. So why don't we uh, put games on the sheets? So I was talking to my mom, who's a retired school teacher, and I said, Mom, I got this great idea. 
I'm gonna put games on sheets. And she said, well, you better put some education on there as well. So we partnered with uh, teachers and it took us about two years, but we created interactive bed sheets for kids who are hospitalized and that grew into shelters. And what we didn't realize, um, but COVID made us aware of this, is that our bed sheets were just what kids needed at home as well. Um, so we've expanded not only with our bed sheets, but now we have slumber bags that are interactive and we also have pillowcases as well. Thank you so much. So my next question for you guys, when did you decide to sell in Amazon stores? How did you even come to that decision? And what's your experience been like? Rodney, we'll kick it off to you. Um, well, how we, Amazon ca actually came to us and, mm -hmm. and asked us if we wanted to participate in the program. And of course, you know, who wouldn't want what's to? What's the program I mean, name? Is, huh? What's the program name? Oh, it, the uh, Black Business <laughs> Black, Accelerator. Black Business Let's Accelerator hear it. Program, <laughs> the Black Business Accelerator Program. My apologies. <laughs> you know, of course, asked us if we wanted to uh, uh, participate in the program, mm -hmm. and we did. And it it has been great as far as helping us, you know, get our business out there commercially because we were looking to try to figure out how to diversify other than selling to just the federal government. And mm -hmm. Amazon gave us that opportunity to put a whole lot of our products on there and get it out there. So the mm -hmm. Black Business Accelerator program. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I mean, Yeah, so we actually, we launched on Amazon at the end of 2020. And um, when the pandemic hit, you know, for new and, some new and emerging brands like all of us, it was tough for us to secure physical retail space being a new brand. And so um, it really forced us to kind of pivot our business strategy. Mm -hmm. And we focused on doubling down on our online first approach. And yeah. so naturally we wanted to launch on Amazon being the largest e-retailer. You know, we wanted to reach new customers, customers that might never see our product. And so that was our initial plan. And so, you know, we've had a lot of success so far selling online. We more than, you know, doubled our business, which yeah. has been great. But I think for, you know, new and emerging brands like us, where we really benefit is the, the credibility and the trust that Amazon builds uh, for companies like us. You know, Amazon has a great reputation, so it really helps um, bring credibility to our brands. Yes, thank you. We're glad you're here. Kevin? We didn't have a choice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when COVID hit, you know, we primarily service hospitals. Okay. And when COVID hit, the hospitals went on lockdown. So we went from being a growing business to being out of business. But so, you know, we focused on hospitals, nonprofits, and working with corporations who would purchase our product to donate to these hospitals and shelters and so forth. So we had to, we knew people were buying online, but we had no resources or knowledge how to get to those B2C people. So when the Black Accelerator Program reached out to us, it was a game changer. It was a blessing for us um, because they actually opened up another channel of opportunity for us to reach, again, these individuals that we knew our bed sheets were really made for as well. Yeah. Um, and it's been just a, a great rocket taken off, you know, since then. But we really, we were. You're doing yeah, good. We were, we were, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Karen. My story is similar to Amin and also to Kevin with the pandemic. But I will say when I came to Amazon, it literally was with a different product that I have, which is Dewburst. And I came to Amazon because I wanted to at least just have some opportunity to be able to get customer feedback. And then they also have the reviews. And as a part of one of my certifications as a benefit corporation, you want to make sure that you get customer feedback. It's a part of the story. And so Amazon allowed for that without me having to pay to get it another way. And so I was able to basically talk to different customers. And then when the pandemic hit, similar to their story, that's when I said, oh, let me add canned chocolates. Let me figure out another way to reach my customers because the retail stores, that was a challenge at the time. They didn't have the space. Yeah. And so Amazon really made the space. It was actually like that saving grace at a time where many of us needed it, especially small businesses. So I'm, I'm definitely grateful for Amazon for that. Yeah, I love that each of you mentioned the customer because you know we're very customer focused and we have over 300 million customers that are shopping on our platform. So this is the place to be to get your products in front of our customers. That's right. So last year, Amazon invested more than $18 billion to help Amazon sellers, just like yourself, grow their sales. That includes investments in the people, infrastructure, tools, and services that help empower and support. What tools do you find most helpful for building your brand and growing your customer base? 
Let's kick it off to Rodney. Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, our account manager has really, Dawn is her name. She's yeah. awesome. So really having that tool, has having her at our disposal has really helped. Mm-hmm. So I would the number one thing for us has been able to have that account manager because we have over 27,000 SKUs, I'm sorry, wow. 27,000 SKUs on Amazon. So you really, really need that type of a person to help you maintain and pay attention to those. So yeah. that's my number one thing. And did you say 27,000 SKUs? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, you are bringing the selection to Amazon. <laughs> Our customers are loving you. Amazon, hey. <laughs> over um, this year already to date, I think we've done 650,000. Wow. On Amazon. Great job. Uh, thank you. Great <laughs> job, Rodney. My, my, I have a great <laughs> team. Yeah. I have, I have a great team. I, I, I can't take any credit. I have a great team of people that have actually worked for me. And again, having Dawn being our account manager helps my team and helps us, you know, stay relevant yeah. in the Black Accelerator program. Yes. Thank you. Kevin? My account manager. Um, she works for Amazon, but she works for me. So, you know, I, I forget that she works for Amazon because she's so um, in tune with my company. And keep in mind, we had no marketing material. We didn't know how to go after a customer. So, you know, not only, you know, she was able to look at everything we had from our copy points to make sure they were correct and then direct us to a, t- a department to oversee that, our noids to make sure that I, they were pointing at the right genre. Yeah. Um, and there was a department for that. Our imagery, our pictures, send them to us. Wow. We'll take pictures of them, wow. right? So she was able to help us tell the story through everything. Right now, our, our A++, our store, has been redesign, redesigned, and it looks awesome, wow. right? Better than what I did. Um, so Nicole has been uh, tremendous. Add-ons. I would get emails in the morning. I would get emails at night. Um, and we didn't know. So, you know, like Rodney was saying from an a, a accolade standpoint, we started out, of course, we're going to be at the bottom. I just looked. Our slumber bags are ranked in the top 100. They're ranked 26 now. Wow. And that's sales. Great job. So, yeah, it's been fantastic. Congratulations. Amazing. And Karen? So my story is similar to Kevin and Rodney. So I also will say my secret weapon is my account manager. So mm-hmm. I've actually had the benefit of having two because mine got promoted. So I had Ethan for the first six to seven months, and now I have Dominic. And it's the strategic thinking. It's the whole, you know, when I first got on Amazon, you know, Ethan was instrumental in giving me the little tidbits to make sure that I was thinking strategically to get my listing optimized, right? To make sure that people could find me. So we went through the the basics, right? Before you can advertise, you need to have, before you can ask for a review, you want to make sure that your listing is right before. And once you get the reviews, then you can advertise. There's a whole process. What are you thinking about? Um, And then Dominic came in and he's helped me to say, okay, now let's rethink that A plus content. Let's use those advertising credits now that you've got the reviews out there. So there's been like a succinct process, but I definitely, the the crux of it, my secret weapon is definitely my strategic account managers. Yes, thank you. I mean? Yeah, I guess I'll take it in a little bit of a different direction. Um, You know, for new sellers, I think Amazon can be a bit overwhelming. So I highly recommend starting with Seller University. I think that was really critical to our success early on is just utilizing, you know, some of those tools and resources to help educate you. Um, So I recommend all new sellers kind of get started with Seller University. But also, I think, you know, some of the tools like um, Amazon Launchpad and, you know, it helps with product placement, things like A-plus content. For new and emerging brands, you know, we thrive on telling our story. And I think, you know, that gives us the ability to tell our story on the brand page and um, really educate the consumers about who they're buying from and, you know, what what kind of business they're impacting. So, um, yeah, the account manager has been great, but I guess to kind of take it a little, little different direction, um, you know, I think those are some of the tools that we really utilize daily. Yes. Thank you. Shout out to all of our account managers, <laughs> yes. Don, yes. Nicole, Ethan, Rashad. Thank you guys. They're very pivotal, you know, a part of BBA. So thank you for giving them a shout out as well. Um, what opportunities have selling in Amazon store provided for you and your business? I mean, I want to kick it off to you. I want you to tell me exactly how you've been able to achieve a new milestone, whether that's secure a physical retail space or even launch a new product. Yeah, so uh, actually since launching on Amazon, we've become the number one selling donut on Amazon, which has really brought a lot of wow. you know credibility for our business. Yeah, it's been huge. And, and they're good. 
Yes. <laughs> You're good. And, it's um, good. you know, yeah. I, <laughs> I appreciate it. And yeah, it really what, what, what it's led for us is uh, led us to get into physical re retail. So really the ability to expand into stores like Amazon Go is something we're um, working on right now. We've had physical retailers reach out to us because, you know, I think one thing that they're doing is they're trying to stay ahead of trends. And so they, you know, Amazon's a great place to find new products, review, mm -hmm. you know, the top selling products in the category. And so we've got a lot of interest from there. And, you know, we actually, we recently raised capital um, just based on our online success and traction. So Amazon's been a game changer for our business and really kind of um, helped fuel our growth and take us to the next step. Yeah, so you launched in 2020 uh -huh. and you've achieved all these great milestones. Kudos to you, that's Appreciate amazing. It. And Rodney, Mr. Well, 27,000 uh, selected. <laughs> <laughs> well, for, for us, what Amazon has really done is during the pandemic, you know, when the government and people really stopped buying, Amazon was still up and running. Mm -hmm. And with us, with, you know, things, I mean, I'm not as, the, these, the, these three I marvel at because of what they sell and what they do. We just sell parts and things for your refrigerators. Yeah, we do gloves and, you know, PPE, PPE and things of that sort. So mm -hmm. it helped us make extra money to be able to keep people employed because that was my number one thing. Yes. I didn't want to have to lay anybody off. I didn't want to have to fire anybody. And we did so well, as I said, on Amazon that we didn't have to fight that. We didn't have to do that. So Amazon has done great as far as helping me keep my people employed along with diversifying basically our company's portfolio as to who the customers, mm -hmm. our customer base and who we're going to reach. Yeah, thank you. Karen? So Amazon has become my reference. So when you're a new business and you're starting off in Amazon, no one knows who you are. They're, you know, retail stores are like, should I work with you? But then you get on Amazon and the benefits that I've had are amazing, amazing blessings is that, you know, I've been on Amazon Live. I've had, you know, Kristen Bell interview me. I've been in Vanity Fair, USA Today. I've been on the website. I could go on and on. There are multiple blessings. I do not take them for granted. But guess what happens when you have those things that, you know, that reference from Amazon that says, hey, we, we would, you know, recommend this product. Then you have other stores. So I've gotten calls from other people, from other businesses because of my notoriety with Amazon. So it's attracting people to me. They're looking at what I'm doing with Amazon. They're saying, okay, Amazon speaks a lot for you. And I've actually had another major retailer say that to me that wow. Amazon speaks the volume so yeah. that has been the helpful part is you know but the all the blessings along the way and customers get excited by seeing you in Vanity Fair or USA mm -hmm. Today so all of those things matter so it's really given me a, a launching pad to like take my business to the next level yeah Kristen Bell Ooh, yes go ahead I mean Karen. I just want to I mean, you know <laughs> let me, Vanity uh, let me uh, it's Kiki Palmer Kristen Bell and yes. Diane von Furstenberg so I just want to <laughs> okay. give them all a shout out so thank you amazing yes. 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 so much fun Kevin so what's been interesting for us is that what we thought we lost we gained mm. so we thought we lost the hospitals for a period of time because of the pandemic and COVID and so forth, but we actually gained hospitals yes. because what, you know, and again, Nicole, what she, you know, and what I like about my account exec is that she held me accountable. Mm. You know, she told me, you know, this is what we're looking for. This is what I think will work. And then she held me accountable. And she said, you know, hospitals have business accounts on Amazon, right? And they do. So we've uh, closed, we've added five new hospitals, mm -hmm. three that purchased uh, product through Amazon in bulk. And I would go, who's buying 20 of my sheets? And I would go and I would see the address. And then we had two who contacted us because what it was showing in inventory, they wanted more than that. So yeah. they contacted us directly. So we've actually, so what took place is she said, we need to build a B2B. So she sent an email and now I have another account exec who has been working with me to build a B2B so that we can target hospitals and shelters and nonprofits mm -hmm. and so forth. Yeah. Talk about strategic business yeah. guidance. <laughs> Shout out to Nicole for all her support. So as you guys know, this year on June 15th, we launched Amazon's Black Business Accelerator, a program that's committed $150 million to help Black-owned businesses build sustainable growth and equity on our platform, our marketplace. So you're all currently participating in the Black Business Accelerator. What elements of the program have proven most valuable for you? Karen. 
So um, in addition to, we've all talked about our strategic account manager. So in addition to that, so the first thing that I was able to use was the photography. So I needed new photos to, to be Amazon ready for my product since I was launching a new product on Amazon. So they provided the photo credits. And then I would also say the advertising. So I talked about being starting off with a bootstrap budget. Mm -hmm. And so being able to start with coupons and test things out with using the advertising budget that they give you, it's, you know, bar none, that's super helpful. So those are the, some of the things that I was able to use out of the BBA program that were amazing. Yeah, thank you. Kevin? Um, I would say, you know, advertising is one of them. You know, making sure our aid cost is where it should be mm -hmm. so that we're making a profit. Um, but let's, you know, I always tell people, you know, God gave me a vision, but I don't represent the person who buys my product. Mm -hmm. So having individuals who can tell the story to the individual who purchases my product has been crucial. Mm -hmm. And working again with the uh, Amazon team, the accelerator team, we've been able to, you know, tell the story, you know, from the perspective that it needs to be told. And for us, that's big for that opportunity that they get when they click on that product to make sure they totally understand what this functionality of this product is all about and who it helps. So that's been, you know, big for us. Yes. Thank you. Amin? Yeah, I think, um, you know, Amazon's a really robust platform. So I think taking advantage of like the education and the, the mentorship part of things has been you know, really critical to our success. Having uh, a mentor who's really sole focus is, you know, to help increase our chances of selling success on Amazon has uh, has been great for us. I think there's always opportunity to, you know, optimize, improve, talk through strategy. So to be able to bounce that off someone and to um, really work with someone who's familiar with the platform, understands it, and can really help grow our business, I think has been great. I think, like they said, the advertising credits, um, you know, some of the PR and the, the placement, at the end of the day, that's all sales and revenue for our business. So, um, you know, everything is driven to help the success of our business on Amazon. So I think it's been a great program. Thank you. And Rodney? <laughs> I would have to say, to piggyback off of what Amin said, you know, the advertising, of course, the mm -hmm. pictures have been, you know, great. Because, again, I'm not selling what they sell. So, you know, people need to know exactly what it is they're getting, if it fits the machines that they're looking to fix. Mm -hmm. So again, being able to have that, have my account manager get with my person and help them, you know, figure out exactly what's needed, exactly what it needs to be said. And I mean, just the advertisement and the tools and yeah. just everything that Amazon provides to try to help you be successful as a company. Yes. That, was, you know, selling on their platform. It's, yeah. it's been great for us. I love that you guys are engaging with all of the BBA's benefits. That's really key, mm -hmm. really key. So I've heard that entrepreneurship can sometimes be a very lonely journey. <laughs> How are you building and maintaining your community? Rodney, we'll start with you. Well, what we do is we hire veterans. I think we have like 37% of our workforce at our company as veterans. So we try to give back and now we have numerous awards for being a veteran friendly company. We, uh, in our community, we donate, you know, PPP uh, items to the, to the local neighborhoods and to mm -hmm. the schools to try to help ease the burden of parents who would have to spend money to get these items for their children mm -hmm. to be able to go to school or yeah. be able to go to daycare. So, you know, we try to hold other business programs so that we can help other black businesses try to find the resources that we have yeah. to try to maybe they can become successful or not even not even as successful but just having an opportunity to see that it can be done because yes. we're doing it and I'm trying to tell you how to do it so you know I'm going to help you so we mm -hmm. that's we, we try to build in our community in that yeah. way. Social impact. Yeah. Amazing. Karen? So I consider my community to be the community in Ghana where we get our chocolate, as well as the community in Los Angeles, which is local to me. In Ghana, the fact that we have our chocolate made in Ghana, so it's grown, processed, and packaged all in Ghana before it comes to the United States, the contributions there come from being able to buy the fair trade cocoa, so that's, a, that's helping out the farmers. 
but also being able to contribute to the jobs. And when I looked at everything that was going on in Ghana, when you talk about helping them get out of the debt that they have coming out of colonialism, then being able to have jobs and export finished chocolate versus just cocoa beans is huge in, the, in, their, in their realm of things. Um, so that's Ghana. And then in Los Angeles, we've partnered with the Social Justice Learning Institute, mm. and 10% of our proceeds go to that organization. And they help black and brown youth in the city of, Lo of Los Angeles and Inglewood um, really become community leaders. So I'm so proud of the work that they do, and I'm proud to be, you know, I'm also sitting on the board. I also volunteer with them, so I do a lot. Um, and then I'll just I'll also say that we also have a policy similar to Rodney where we diverse hires is at the top of our list. And so anytime I can find someone diverse, my photographer, I get them from Ghana. If I can find wow. a woman who does photography that's black owned, I'm hiring her. So yeah. I'm rooting for everybody black if that matters. <laughs> um, and so that's part of my business strategy. Amazing. Your reach is amazing. All the way to Ghana to create jobs. Yeah. Amazing. Kevin? Our company was built on giving. Um, you know, before we made a profit, we donated 60 sheets to the Salvation Army shelter. Um, so that's always been our mission. We actually have a foundation, the Playtime Therapy Sheets Foundation. So we're constantly, you know, giving to organizations that provide safe beds for kids. Mm -hmm. um, but through the program, we've also been able to give. You know, we all have our own circles at home. And I have friends who are um, on Amazon that look like me, and I'm able to lead them in mm. the directions that they need to go to make their Amazon pages, um, you know, more robust as well so that they can, you know, make a living, you know, through Amazon as well. So we're, that's, that's our mission. We're going to give before we make. Yeah. I mean? Yeah. So, um, you know, it is a lonely journey, definitely, but I think it's helpful for us. You know, I have several co-founders, including twin brothers. So, you know, we're always on the journey together and it really, um, it helps kind of put us all on the same page. It's helpful that, you know, we're all on the same mission and vision. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, in our community, we really, you know, it's people first for us. And I think, uh, when we, for, when we first started out, you know, we were college kids just trying to, you know, make a quick buck, but at, <laughs> as we've grown, um, now we're employing people. Now we're, you know, putting food in, on people's table. And so I think that's one thing that we really take pride in is the the, the people that work for us. Because at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're a team. You know, I didn't build this by myself. We we worked together as a team to to really lead our mission. And so I think it's just been incredible to to be able to help support other people and just, you know, give back in terms of education, mentorship, things like what we've learned to help accelerate the curve for other people who you know, want the same opportunity. Yeah. I love how you guys are lifting as you climb. You know, my motto is true leaders serve. And you guys are definitely servant leaders. I love how you're reaching back. So kudos to you. So speaking of community, there is a common phrase that says we must lift as we climb. How are you working to lift or invest in your community as you climb your entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial ladder? And you guys touched a little bit on it, but give me a quick few seconds on how exactly you're doing it I mean yeah I think for us it just starts with the people um, you know being able to employ people uh, provide jobs to really uplift our our economy and just leading by example you know uh, there's a lot of young uh, striving entrepreneurs who are trying to figure out how do we take that next step and you know just being able to give back and provide any kind of um, advice or mentorship that can help accelerate the process, um, you know, we really take pride in that for sure. Amazing. Rodney? Uh, well, my motto is send the elevator back down. So, <laughs> you know, what I do to, to, for our community to help is <laughs> I, 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 I donate <laughs> as, as much as I can to children's cause, black children in the neighborhood cause. And as a businessman, I like for them to see that, I'm not a cook. I don't, I mean, and not that there's anything wrong with owning, you know, uh, the, the street car or anything like that, but that's what they see. I don't own a barber shop. I, I'm in the government field. I'm, I, I'm on Amazon. I'm on things that they don't see us. Mm -hmm. So I try to be visual for them so that they can see something other than, you know, what they're used to seeing in their neighborhood. They're, yes. you know, like I can be, I can be that. Yeah. I don't have to be that, even mm -hmm. though there's nothing wrong with that. This is this may be what I'm more cut out for. And yeah. here's somebody who made it. So and I also try to mentor and whatever help any by any young black entrepreneur yeah. help need or whatever. I, I try to give them whatever kind of guidance I can give them yeah. just to try to help. Representation is key. Yeah. Right. Karen. 
So in corporate America, my sponsor, Michelle Miller, shout out to her. She's a VP of employment law. And I'm mentioning that because every Friday she would meet with somebody else mm. um, that needed help coming up the ranks. Yeah. And so I would only be able to get on her calendar every two months. But that meant every week she was meeting with someone new. And, and as a VP, if she had time, I have time. Mm. So how do I make the time? I have Calendly link on the bottom of my signature line that says, if you want to schedule a time to talk to me, schedule here. And I don't turn people away. I, I remember reaching out to people when I started in, the, in this food business. Mm -hmm. And they were like, hey, here's some presses. Here's some press releases they've done. Learn about them. They don't have time to talk. I totally get it. But how are we supposed to reach back if we're not, you know, so as I'm climbing, to your point, I'm definitely making sure that if somebody wants to talk, if you have a quick question, I can answer those questions. I have 15-minute time blocks. Just get on my calendar. I set it up for Friday. It's really yeah. easy. So I just think it's important to have those conversations. Yeah. Kevin? It's empowering to have learned wisdom that you can pass down to others. Mm -hmm. And um, when individuals would, you know, hey, Kev, I got this product and I think it'd be great for hospitals. And I would be able to, you know, say, hey, this is where you want to go or this is who you want to talk to. And now because of being a part of the accelerated program, I have learned wisdom and I'm able to help, you know, others who are on Amazon and say, you know, this is who we're going to email for this and this is who we're going to email for that. So I'd love being able to give back to the community, you know, from a learned wisdom standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, so, and we'll, you know, I, that's my passion. I love that. Yeah. Keep doing it, guys. Our community needs it. Yeah. For sure. So you're all successful. We all know that. You're successful entrepreneurs across various categories. How do you juggle entrepreneurship with all the other elements of a full life, like your family, friends, and your passions? I mean, yeah, no, that's a great question. <laughs> um, you know, I think I can probably speak on behalf of everyone here, but there, there really is no work life balance for us. It's all just work. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're all kind of workaholics in a sense. But, you know, I think that's kind of we're all really passionate about what we do and we're all on a mission to, you know, to make it happen. And so uh, I think for us, it's just kind of, you know, finding a balance between the two and just, uh you know, interweaving everything together, you know, for myself, personally, I, I live with my twin brother, and he's my co founder. So every, you know, every day is a board meeting. And you know, we're always staying busy. But, you know, we, we love what we do. So we don't mind, you know, doing extra work. But yeah. that's just us. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. It changes, you know, in the beginning, I think all of us, I mean, we were burning the midnight oil, mm -hmm. um, you know, drink coffee to wake up, drink coffee to stay up. <laughs> um, but then, you know, your priorities change. You know, I have two boys and a wife and they didn't sign up for the roller coaster ride. So I had to change my priorities and make sure that I was able to enable and provide for their dreams as well. Yeah. Um, so it just depends on where you're at, you know, in life and in your journey. Yeah. But there's no you just you just I would say. Um, to definitely make sure that you take care of your health. Mm -hmm. um, don't, you know, get rich or die trying, or you're going to die trying to get rich. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was one thing that I kind of let go, but I got that back on track. But you, I mean, there's no right answer. You just, you're on the go. You're just trying to make it happen. Yeah, work-life harmony. That's mm -hmm. what I'm hearing. But prioritize your mental health and yeah. physical health. Rodney? For me, it was, a, it was a case of, like you were saying, me and the wife, working, burning the midnight oil. Then we throw our son in the mix <laughs> until we were able to build a staff. And I'm pretty sure if my staff is watching, they're going to laugh because my favorite word is, how do I, how do I balance it now? I delegate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Need that help. <laughs> Accelerated program. Yes. <laughs> yes. Karen? So I would say it's, it's two things that, that, have, that have helped me get through. One is being able to connect with other mm. business owners and rely on them to have little tidbits of conversations. When I first started, I was talking to my friends and they're like, please stop sending me 20 pictures of your product. I don't know which one looks better. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> they, they don't, they don't want to do that. Um, so we spent a lot of time, me going through that process. And then I will just say the other part, and this is my secret sauce. I block off my calendar um, up until 10 a.m. So it's it's a secret, maybe not a secret, but my calendar is blocked up until 10 a.m. for whatever I want to do, whether it's a workout class, whether it's pray, whether it's watch reality TV, mm -hmm. whatever it is. And I do all of the above in that time, sip on tea, watch the sunrise. I'm still up early, but if I want to check email, I just don't want to talk to anybody. Yeah. And that's just me blocking off time to have personal time that no one else can take because, as they've already alluded to, we work 
till 10 o'clock, sometimes 11 yes. o'clock, accounting books, those are long, you know, whatever it is, it's long hours. And so you gotta have something that you've said, no one can take this and it's mine. Okay. So that's my time till 10 a.m. Okay. That's what I'm talking about, <laughs> <laughs> being selfish with some of your time. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, so these past 18 months have been hard, very hard for small businesses. We've heard a lot about the struggles and challenges. I'd like for each of you to take a moment to celebrate your resilience. Great job. As, as we ease into what could be a recovery, what are you most looking forward to through this year and into the next? Let's go ahead with you, Kevin. Um, you know, we did a lot of work with corporations through their corporate social responsibility. You know, we would, you know, get together on, let's say on a Monday and we put together playtime kits and distraction kits and then we would go to the hospital and we'd be able to get on the units and we'd be able to, you know, tell the kids to leave the room and we would surprise them with the sheets on the bed and then we would sit and play games with them and so forth. So I, I really miss that. So I can't wait till we're able to, you know, get back into the hospitals and get back into the shelters and, and you know, and, and be, you know, face to face with individuals that, uh, you know, we want to provide our sheets to. Yeah. Rodney? Um, I think what I'm looking forward to is this year being better than the last. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes think, to that. <laughs> I, I think that's mostly what I'm looking for. Yes, that's what I'm, I'm looking for because, I mean, really, coming from the humble beginnings that myself and my family and we all come from, I mean, I, I, I know it sounds cliche, but I'm I'm pretty happy with everything that life has given me and my family mm -hmm. and my employees right now. And I feel like if I ask for more, I'm going to be pretty greedy. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Karen? So for me, I'm, I'm most looking forward to the fact that, it, it, you know, you already have this platform that I've built with Amazon, and now I get to launch more products with the customer feedback. So now it's like, what more can I do? Now I can get more creative, lean back a little bit. So I'm just kind of excited about being able to do more for the, what the customers have asked. And so that's based on me spending this past year you know, or the whole pandemic, if you will, speaking and talking to customers and getting that feedback. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, well, I'm excited for you. Thank you. I mean. Yeah, uh, I think I'm really excited about getting our product to retail. I think for us, as we kind of look at a recovery to as physical stores start opening up and people are going back to stores, I'm excited to really get expand our product, you know, nationwide, expand distribution and really be able to do more in-person events. Mm -hmm. So like demos, sampling, stuff like mm -hmm. that. With the food product, you know, it's all about taste and yeah. it's about getting people, like qualifying people as customers. And so to be able to, to reach more people in person, I think we're able to impact people more on a personal level. And, um, you know, I'm really excited about that and that opportunity. Yes, amazing. So for all of you, we're gonna go ahead and turn to our questions from our audience. But before we get started, thank you all so much for this amazing conversation. So Karen and Amin, how much research did you do before launching your first products? Were there costs associated with the research? Mm. Karen, let's start with you. That's a, that's a really good question because Amin and I both have food brands and I think there's a different process to it. So the research, I would say there wasn't any cost to it because I spent a lot of time talking to the buyers, taking pictures of products on shelves, all the way down to the coloring on the bars because chocolate bars are typically brown, so I did a white label. So all those different things to make my chocolate stand out. What I will say though with the food product is you have to have FDA approved labeling and there is a cost to that process. So I just don't wanna skip over that. So I would say if you're researching, you don't have to spend any money. It's the footwork going into the store, but if you're, getting ready to actually launch something, there is a cost, there's food science, there's testing, and then there's definitely that nutritional label that you wanna get right. You do not want them to have to confine you for a change. Amazing. Yeah. For me? I think just to echo that, uh, in terms of research and getting started, you know, we didn't do a ton of research. I think for us, we wanted to lead with innovation. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to, to bring a product to market that, you know, didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, there wasn't a lot of research to do. It was just knowing that there wasn't um, similar products out there. And so, um, you know, I think one thing that a lot of people 
when they're getting started. Um, you know, a misconception is that you have to do all this research and be well informed. I think, you know, it's really about just getting started mm -hmm. and getting it out there mm -hmm. and letting the product speak for itself. And that's what we did was, you know, try and get a minimum viable product and just get it to market and let people tell us, mm -hmm. you know, what they think about it. And so uh, we didn't do a ton of research, you know, more so on the flavor side of things, like what was going to be our initial flavors launch. But, you know, we wanted to bring a new product to market. Just do it. If you have an idea, like you heard Karen and Amin, just do it. Mm -hmm. See what your customers think and then work backwards from there.